when you think about the love of God that he gave in Christ Jesus. How can we? In Ephesians 6, 13, 4, therefore take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand to and to be able to withstand in the evil days. When evil days come, you should think of the love and it will make you stand. Amen. And having done all to stand, stand therefore having your girt, your waist with the truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness. See, if you got righteousness on, you can stand. Because that love reminds you of all the power that you had, that he had when he went through to die on the cross for you. Our fear should not stand a chance in the love of God. It should not. You know, sometimes we let darkness rule our bones. But he tells us in Ephesians 5, 11, have no fellowship with unfruitful work of darkness, but rather expose it. Whatever is making you ache, you just gotta expose it. I'm having a trouble with lying. I'm having trouble with lust. I'm having trouble with stealing. You gotta expose that thing because the love of God should make you wanna say, I'm sorry, God, I know I'm wrong. And then Ezekiel 3 said, and he said, son of man, can these bones live? So I answer, oh Lord, you know. You know that he loves you. So these bones can get up out of that valley of dry bone and they can live and they can do the things that God has called. Because fear cannot stand in the love of God. It can't do it. You should be able to, to spend time with him that's sitting with that TV or doing all kinds of other things. When that things take your mind away, when it's God's time, we so easy want to go do something else when it's God's time. When you going to take out some time for God? When he's going to be the soulness of your attention? You know, last week we talked about Set in the moment. You know, we got to get the moments where we do nothing but think about God. Stop it, y'all two. Put it away. It's God's time. You know, see, that's what Satan do. It's God's time, y'all. Fear should not stand in the love that God has demonstrated to us. We got to take more time for God because time is running out. Fear has no chance if you remember the love of God. Joy I own, the unspeakable joy. In 1 Peter 1 and 8, whom have not seen you love, though now you do not see him, yet believing. You will rejoice with the joy inexpressible and full of the glory. The love that keeps raining down day in and day out. The love that God pulls down upon this earth every day because he sees his son sitting at the right hand. Demonstrate, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. They know not. They don't know the sacrifice that I did to bring you back to him. Love has no fear. When you stand in his God's love, it don't have no fear. Sometimes we get so into that brokenness. In Romans 8, 35, whom have not seen you love, though now you do not see him, yet believing you rejoice. In the glory of God. Who not seen it? That brokenness. Sometimes he had to break you. So that you could see the joy of his love. Because all good things. Come from the Lord. And if you can't see it. Guess who you are joining in. You got 
got to know the difference before it's too late. My fear don't stand a chance in your love. Psalms 27, 1 and 3. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Who shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked came against me to eat up of my flesh, my enemies and foes, they shall stumble and fall. Those an army encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. The war may arise against me. In this I will be confident that the joy of the Lord is my strength. should not perish. He gave everything that he had so that the fear won't <laughs> overtake you that you remember day in and day out when you're going through something. Just look up and say, God so loved the world. He loves me. This fear can't stand in the way of God's love. I don't care what we go through day in and day out. It cannot take over the love that God has for us. <clears throat> My past is behind me. Psalms 94. For a thousand years in your sight are like yesterday when it is past and like a watch in the night is over. When the morning comes, it's a brand new day. It can't Hold all the things that you went through yesterday and the day before. Let it go. Remember, you woke up this morning with the love of God. And all that fear that you had yesterday, it got to go when you wake up and open your eyes and say, Lord, for you love me so much that you gave me your only begotten son. How can I let fear Stop me from worshiping you, for honoring you, for doing the things that you have called me to do. How can I stop it? Let that fear take over me when the joy of the Lord is my strength. Fear doesn't stand a chance. And I love it. 2 Timothy 1 and 7. God has not given us the spirit of fear. If God has not given us the spirit of fear, why? Are we walking in fear? For God has not given us that fear. He has shown us. He told us. How can you say you, he, that you don't love yourself, your brother, if God loves you? How can you say fear has overtaken you when the love of God is such stronger than that fear? When you Remember Peter walking out. He forgot about the fear, the storm that was around. And he stepped out of the boat. And he started walking on the water. And he only started sinking. Why? When he allowed the fear to come with cover. Instead of keeping his eye on Jesus, that he'll see the love that God has for him. Fear cannot stand a chance in God's love. If you know that God loves you, why you keep letting fear? Ephesians 6.13 Therefore take up the whole armor of God and stand, y'all. Stand against all them fears. Because nothing can't happen to you unless God allow you. And when God allows something, he got something better for you. Sometimes that's going through something and then coming out and saying, Well, I didn't think I could get through that, but I did are you still in the same thing that had you bound years ago? If you're a brand new day, you mean all this time you're still walking in all that mess? You got over it? Something in your past you have gotten over? 
something. <coughs> and if you got over it, why are you still allowing it to beat you up? You know, so many people still upset of things that happened in their past. <coughs> when God don't gave you a new day. He said the midnight's going to come. But thank God for the joy in the morning. Mm -hmm. When you wake up knowing that you had a bad day yesterday. But this morning you made it through because you woke up. Fear does not stand a chance. <clears throat> In 1 Corinthians 13, 8 to 10. See, the greatest love story is found in 1 Corinthians 13. He says in verse 8, love never fails. True love never fails. If you got a true parent, they're going to love you in spite of all that you do. And that's how come God loves us in spite of all that we do. But where there is prophecy, they will fail. Because sometimes we don't listen to the prophecy and do what it told us to do. Where there is tongue, they will cease. Sometimes we don't even use the tongue. We don't even say things like we're supposed to say. Tell somebody we forgive them and we love them. And we instead of we want to tell them that we hate them. Where there is knowledge... You want to walk around and act like you're a fool. You don't want to know, act like you know things. You want to act like you're stupid. If you don't listen to instructions, you're stupid. You're foolish. That's what the word says. It, it will vanish away. Sometimes we give our knowledge away. Because we don't study to show ourselves approved. Rightly dividing the word of truth. God gave us the basic instructions on how to leave this earth. But we don't want to take the time to understand it. Because we don't really want no knowledge. We want to stay in the shape that we in. Because we think we okay. But when you die, it's going to be too late. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part, but when that which is perfect has come, then that which is in part will be done away with. Because what is perfect is going to overtake what's in part. Because the truth, God say, is, is going to set you free. But if you don't want it, the wisdom and the knowledge of knowing the difference, there is a difference between good and evil. You can't keep sugarcoating to yourself. You can't keep doing it. You got to make some time for the Lord. You need to spend more time with him. If you spend whatever your heart desiring, that's who you are. If you desire more of this world, guess what? That's what you got. But if you desire more of God, you got to spend more time with God. Whatever you're spending more time with, that's what got you. You know, it's a shame to have the TV have power over you. It's a shame that cigarettes got power over you. It's a shame lying got power over you. I, I think Luke 9 1 said, uh, Jesus. God has given us power over all demons and diseases. But we walk around with all these things and, and, and letting it rule us when we're supposed to be ruling it. How can that be? You, you saying God is a liar? You, it can't be. Fear cannot stand in the love of God. It can't do. When is it going to take root in you? And see that fear cannot take over God's love. You got to wake up. It's power in love. For the Hebrews 4, 12 said, for the word is living and powerful. And
and is sharper than any two-edged sword, pierced even to the division of the soul and spirit, and of the joint and marrow. And it is a discerner of the thoughts and the intent of the heart. Sometimes God has to pierce that heart so you can see what you really think. Because there's power in love. Your heart will tell you when you start talking in a while, after a while, they'll tell on you what you really think, who you're really after, who you really love. Just keep talking. Sometimes that's why God said, be slow to speak and quick to listen. You talk too much and you're always messing up yourself and you're always letting people know that you're a fool, that you're stupid. That you don't spend enough time with God. You, when somebody make you mad, you could you anger come out. Now it's a righteous anger, but sometimes I'm talking about that anger when you get mad at somebody because they did something to you when you did so many things against God. That's why I learned how to love and forgive. That's the way we're supposed to be. And, and when we've been around God enough, you have heard it enough that you're supposed to be quick to forgive. Because there go you. When a brother is overtaken in a fault, he who is spiritual, restore him in the spiritual. Us leaders, we got to learn how to do that. That's what we supposed to have our DNA about. We're supposed to be just like God. It's a shame that it's taken us so long to get ourselves together and realize that fear cannot stand in the love of God. It can't do it. I don't know why it's taken us so long. We still keep allowing that flesh to overtake us. When somebody needs some love, you're supposed to give them love. You can tell them that they're wrong. It ain't nothing wrong with them, but you shouldn't want to walk away from it. That's the time when we really need to show somebody some love. It's when they messed up. Because every day, God show us that we are wrong, but he still loves us. There's power in love. That's why we need to break off these chains. In Matthew 5, 19, whoever therefore breaks off one of the least of these commandments and teaches men so shall be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever does and teach them, he shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. When you teach people to love in spite of what they've done to you, in spite of how they treat you, you show love, you're going to be great in the kingdom of God. You're going to be great. Don't worry about it. God say vengeance is his, not ours. And every day we got to get it together and realize love overtakes fear. Because sometimes people just need somebody to love them. They just need somebody to love them. Stop using people to benefit you. Some of us use people to make us look good. And when we need to just humble ourselves down and get in God and do the things that God said instead of what you want to do. Mm. Standing on the rock of my firm foundation. That's where it got to start, y'all. Jesus got to be our firm foundation. He tells us in Matthew 7, 24 to 26. Therefore, whoever hears these saying of mine, are you hearing? Is your ears open? Are you listening or are you falling asleep and not listening to what God say? See, Satan wants you to go to sleep so you don't be paying attention and you're not being attentive to God's word. See, just at the right moment, the thing that God wants you to hear, you can't hear because Satan don't made you go to sleep. Whoever hear these saying of mine and does them, you, that don't mean you just hear it and don't do it. I will 
likened to him a wise man who built his house on the rock. Or were you the ones? And when the rain descended, the flood came, and the wind blew and beat on that house, and it did not fall, for it was founded on the rock. See, if it get washed away, it wasn't on a good foundation. You know, every day you falling, you coming short of the glory of God, you ain't on a firm foundation. And sometimes you don't even realize you have proof that you're not on a good foundation as you thought you was. Because some of the things that we do shows that we have not. We might say that we got it, but it come, it be proven. God is always testing us. You don't never know when God's going to test you and see what you've been talking about if you really got it. Sometimes I found out, you know, when somebody do something to me, it's God testing me. Do I truly love? You know, when they was taking me to cold out of here, I had tears in my eyes. And I said, you know what, Dakota? I still love you. And if I could ever help you again, I would. I, I called Officer Adam and I said, Adam, I said, you know, I'm so hurt. Because I want them to know love. Because somebody else didn't. But he needed to learn love. It was a test. God is constantly testing our ministry, y'all. Is we going to love people in spite of what they do? When we forget what we do. We got to get together. We always lying and sneaking. Some of y'all don't even realize You've been here a couple of times and you don't did the same thing over and over again. And then you can't even remember that you don't did the same thing that other people. You want to go talk about other people when you have done the same exact thing. Fear. It's taking over your love. But fear so don't suppose to take over your love. Of God. But everyone who hears these saying of mine and does not do them will be like the foolish man who built his house on the sand. Are you sinking today? Are you sinking? Because you ain't truly got no firm foundation. Your fear has taken over, taken your love. And you're sinking. You can't keep still. You can't concentrate. You can't show that you're truly on the Lord's side. Because your fear has taken over the love of God. When your fear was not supposed to take over, it should die. Because love is more powerful than anything. What has your fear done to your love? It's time for you to check it out. Play that song one more time. What has your fear done to your love? What has it done? You need to take some time and think about it. Time is getting so close. I don't know which next one of us is about to die. <laughs> but you better get every time you hear this word. You got to do some re-examination of your heart. It don't matter how old you is, neither. Once you realize and know right from wrong, you are accountable. You got to get yourself together before it's too late. Does your fear <clears throat> overtake your love? You got to get yourself together then. 
because you're going to drown in quicksand. But my fear doesn't stand in my love. My fear does not stand. Tim, why you ain't played the song? Thank you, Lord. It's okay. Come on, everybody stand up. I want you to get this song in your spirit. This has been a wonderful revelation. This start. This is that one month. Darkness has overtake your bones. Brokenness and pain is all I know. Oh, I won't be shaken. No, I won't be shaken. My fear doesn't stand a chance when I'm standing in your love. My fear doesn't stand a chance when I'm standing in your love. My fear doesn't stand a chance when I'm Ain't got no place to hide. I am not captive to you I'm not captive to the lie. I'm not afraid to leave my path behind. No, I won't be shaken. I won't be shaken. My fear doesn't stand a chance stand in your love. My fear doesn't in the thousands we can get when we don't let our fear overtake our love. Let that be something that you keep in your mind. Keep it in your conscious mind. That my fear, my fear. doesn't stand a chance when I stand in God's love. You got to keep telling yourself no matter what comes against you. Know that God is greater for you than who could be against you in this world. Amen. Greater is he that is in me than me in this world. Because no fear cannot take the love of God. You got to keep pounding that stuff in your heart and your mind. Because Satan is after you. And you're the only one. Nobody else is not going to be there. But you. Spirit of the living God. Fall fresh upon us. Mold us. And make us after thy will, God. God, and let this be a commandment for us, God. That we will no longer let fear overtake 
the love that you have for each one of us, God. Help us to stand up and be counted for. Help us with our own armor on. Show the world that we love you. And we're not drowning in quicksand. We thank you and praise you for this day, God. Keep speaking to us. Keep encouraging us, God. Because you have made us accountable today that your love will cast out this fear. And we will not sink because we are on a firm foundation in you. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Our soul says hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen. And mercy for God. Bless our fellowship. Bless our food that we are about to partake of. God, we thank you for each and every person that hear, every person that will hear this sermon. God, send it out, God, that people will hear. You know who you know needs to hear this sermon. God, open up to even, let it just pop up on people's things and that they will hear this word, God, that needs it, God. I ask you in the mighty name of Jesus, that send it out in the airways and byways, God, that somebody who need to hear this word got fear in the way that they will hear that the love of you is so much more and that they don't have to sing because they can have a firm foundation. We thank you, God. We thank you. We praise you right now. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. And our soul says, thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, God. Mm -hmm.